Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about the plant tissue culture, which is an important technique in the field of plant biotechnology and also agriculture. And this field is flourishing because it has a lot of advantages with which we can improve the crops and also lead to the production of healthy plants. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the definition and then we'll move forward to discuss the importance and advantages of this technique. And finally, we will also look upon the process and the steps that are involved in this very, very important technique. First, let us just see that what exactly the plant tissue culture is. So if we look onto the name of this technique, it's known as tissue culture. Now, tissue is referring to the small part of the plant and culturing means that we are using an artificial medium onto which we are culturing this tissue in order to produce something. So the tissue culture is a method in which we are taking the fragments either from the plant or the animal and we are introducing it to an artificial environment where they are continuing to function and grow and hence produce fully grown organism. So when we are using the animal tissue, then that technique is known as the animal tissue culture. Whereas when we are using the plant tissue, then we call it as plant tissue culture. And in this uh, video, we are talking about the plant tissue culture. Now, what exactly this technique is used for? This is used to multiply and regenerate the novel plants from the genetically engineered cells. Or it can be the other cells as well. It's not important for the cells to be genetically engineered only uh, to perform the tissue culture. We can use any kind of cell from the plant. And this technique is um very important to have aseptic conditions now what are aseptic conditions aseptic conditions that there is a complete absence of microorganisms so we have to make sure that we are providing aseptic conditions and there is no growth of microorganisms happening in the culture because if there will be any kind of contamination due to the microorganisms that can lead to the uh, halting of the growth process and the tissue culture will fail eventually now, before we actually move forward to understand that what are the uses of the plant tissue culture, we need to understand one term which is known as explant. So what is an explant? Explant is basically any part of the plant, any part of the plant that we are using for the culturing process. So for example, if you use the leaf a small part of the leaf from the plant, then that is the explant that you're using for the culturing. Or maybe you can use the root of the plant, you can use the nodes of the plant, you can use the single cells as well, or you can use the protoplasts, you can use uh, any other component like the shoot, the meristem tip, anything you can use for the plant tissue culture. So that is known as an explant. So this is a very important uh, terminology for this technique. Now moving on to discuss the uses of the plant tissue culture. So they are widely used to obtain disease-free plants. This is the very important point. So um, in normal circumstances, there are high chances of the plant getting diseased. So when we are doing the plant tissue culture, we have this very good advantage that we can produce the disease-free plants. Now, why this is possible? Because we are using the aseptic conditions, as I just told. We are trying to make sure that there is no contamination happening in the culturing process. And hence, the plants that will be obtained, they will be disease-free. There is a rapid propagation of plants that are difficult to propagate. Now, there are several different kinds of plants that are very difficult to propagate, maybe due to the non-viable seeds, or maybe they are uh, season dependent. So in those cases, those plants can be rapidly propagated by the use of plant tissue culture. And this is also a very important example of the uses. Uh, we can also do the somatic hybridization. Uh, so somatic hybridization is the process where we are using the somatic cells, which are the non-germ cells from the two different plants. And we can make a hybrid out of them so that we are able to incorporate the um, important traits of both the plants in one single plant. So this is an uh, altogether separate kind of technique which we can discuss in the coming lectures. Now, the genetic improvement of the commercial plants is also possible. So if you want to do some genetic modifications or you want to uh, make sure that the plant is having an enhanced uh, trait, you can do some genetic improvements while performing the plant tissue culture. 
and we can also obtain androgenic or the gynogenic haploid plants now this is also a field of agriculture that is flourishing so for the breeding programs you can use the plant tissue culture as well talking about the major advantages or the importance uh, in a relatively short time and space a large number of plantlets can be produced starting from a single explant so as i just mentioned that explant is basically a single a small part of the plant that we are using for the culturing process so let's suppose that this is the whole plant and you are using this small segment of the leaf as an explant now you can culture this leaf through the process of plant tissue culture on an artificial medium and from this small part of the leaf, uh, plant that is a leaf you can produce whole new plant again so and this requires very less space and this can be done in short period of time if we compare it to the growth of the natural plant taking an explant does not destroy the mother plant so rare and endangered plants can be cloned safely so there are certain circumstances where there are uh, some plant species that are on the verge of extinction so in order to preserve them you can use the tissue culture technique where you just have to take a small part of the plant and provide artificial medium in which you have added all the nutrients necessary for the growth of the plant and then you can grow the whole new plant from that so in this case when you are extracting the small explant from the plant the mother plant is not destroyed and also it is easy for the uh, desirable traits to uh, directly go into the culture setup so we do not need enough amount of space for the field trials so you can easily introduce desirable traits in the plants while they are in the laboratory conditions only and once the um, culture has been established the plant tissue culture line can give continuous supply of young plants throughout the year so you can just keep on making lines of these plants for example you take an x plant from one uh, plant and you grew the tissue culture out of it and now you can take the small component of that tissue culture and try to grow it on a different media in a different petri plate or a tube and so on you can keep on making the lines of the same plant the time required is very shortened so you don't have to wait for the whole cycle of the seed development so you can skip a lot of time in the growth of the plants by using this technique also the plants they are usually free from any kind of bacterial or fungal uh, infection so there uh, is the development of disease free plants now the plant tissues they can also be frozen and regenerated through the tissue culture so this is also one of the very important uh, uses now talking about the procedure that is involved so there are typically five steps involved so in the first step you have to select the explant so you have to decide that what is that specific component of the plant that you want to use for the culturing process so it can be anything as i just mentioned that it can be the leaf it can be the protoplast it can be the nodal segments they can be the internodes or they can be the roots the... so uh, it can be anything it just depends on the need of your experiment so all the plant cells they have the capability of regenerating and this specific uh, capability is known as the totipotency so each plant of uh, each cell of the plant they have the capability of regenerating from one single cell itself due to its uh, property called totipotency so that is why we are able to use any part of the plant now we have to do the surface sterilization because in the natural environments uh, the plant cells they are exposed to a lot of dirt particles or maybe the microbial particles due to which there are high chances of contamination when we will try to propagate it into the artificial medium so you have to do some surface sterilization and what do you mean by surface sterilization this basically means that you are removing all kinds of contamination from the surface of your explant that you are going to use so for the surface sterilization we use different kinds of chemicals like mercury chloride you can use and there are several other uh, chemicals like sodium hypochlorite so you have to give the treatment of these chemicals to the explant for the specified period of times now the next step after the surface sterilization of the explant is the inoculation and in the inoculation phase you have to do the media preparation as well now what is this media preparation so media preparation basically refers to the preparation of an artificial medium that contains all the nutrients that are required by the plant to grow 
for example when we talk about the natural field conditions all the nutrients for the plant they are being provided by the soil there are lots of them for example the micronutrients the macronutrients the vitamins and the hormones so here in the laboratory conditions under in vitro conditions what we are doing we are trying to provide the artificial uh, conditions so the artificial conditions involve the in media preparation as well so we are introducing an artificial medium and into this artificial medium we have added all the macronutrients the micronutrients the hormones the vitamins and all the stuff that is required by the plant to grow so in the artificial medium uh, we inoculate the sterilized x plant and then we do the incubation process and after a certain period of time now this time depends um, it varies from plant to plant so after a certain period of time uh, you will start to observe the development of tiny shoots from the explant whatever the explant it is and then eventually after you change the hormonal treatment the rooting starts to take place so after the little tiny uh, shoots and the roots have been formed you will see that a small plantlet has been developed so this is the plantlet that you obtain from a single explant by the process of tissue culture and now you have to do the hardening process what is hardening you cannot grow a whole fully grown plant in the laboratory itself it's just that up till a certain stage of the plant growth you can grow it in the lab so that you are making sure that the plant is remaining disease free and it has also been introduced with the desirable traits if any so now you have to transfer it into the natural conditions in the soil where it can develop into a whole new plant a healthy and the uh, adult plant so for that you uh, use the greenhouse now what is greenhouse greenhouse is typically uh, an area which has monitored temperature conditions humidity conditions water conditions and uh, all the important parameters that are required for the plant to grow so you can monitor all those parameters in this enclosed uh, setup so there you provide different kinds of conditions on the plant for example some on some in circumstances you can increase the oxygen levels at others you can decrease the oxygen levels and you can increase or decrease the carbon dioxide levels you can try to mimic the drought like conditions you can try to mimic rainfall conditions you can uh, try to you know, mimic the hot temperature cold temperature so all these different temperatures which a normal plant is exposed to in the natural environment that is being provided to this tissue culture uh, raised plant so after all this treatment is given some of the plants might die because they are not able to uh, acclimatize themselves or harden themselves to these conditions so they are not able to survive these harsh conditions but there are some plants which are able to survive these conditions and those are known as the hardened plants now these hardened plants are finally transferred to the field for the growth process so that was it about the tissue culture thank you so much